This part is so important. You don't want to leave this part of the chapter without understanding because it is not going to go away. It'll seem like it's going to go away. So there's two chapters it's not going to be used in, and then it's going to come back with a vengeance, and it won't leave you alone. So you want to remind yourself about this now. You want to understand it really well, and if you don't, then start asking questions. There's a chart right here that's going to help. You don't want to use this chart, though. You don't want to use it at all to try to get to the answers because it's too complicated. What you do want to do is practice factor label to make sure that you're getting this right. It's just kind of showing you, though, um, we spend a lot of time right here talking about Avogadro's number and how you can use Avogadro's number of atoms and get to moles, and then you can use the atomic mass and get to atoms, or if you have, um, get to grams, or you can go the other way. So we talked a lot about on that side. We also talked about how you can go from moles of atoms to moles of molecules. That was like where we had C6H12. That would be a molecule. And then we said in it we had like, you know, six carbon mole, uh, mole of carbons or 12 hydrogens. So that's what we did before. Now we are talking on the bigger picture. Now we have these things like on this page. It's not just atoms. There are lots of elements all stuck together. So the same principle applies. So we're going to be practicing the exact same thing. But now we're talking about these grouped together atoms, bonded atoms. So this is just for a reference. Again, I don't recommend that you use this instead of learning how to do it. It's it's might feel like less work now, but in the long run, it's so much less work to just follow a uh, factor label and unit conversion, that method. So the question was to know how many moles of water, and they're the molecules, are present in 1.5 gram sample of water. So 1.50 grams of water. And so that's grams of water, because remember, we dropped that unit down right away. Grams of water, grams of water. Then we're going to move up and we're going to move it into moles of water. From the periodic chart, we know that water is this one point. We're doing it to two decimal places, so it's 1.01. .01. So water, I'm going to write over to the side here because we need the molar mass of the whole thing. 1.01 .01 times 2. And then the oxygen over here, this 15.999, to two decimal places is that times 1, and so when I add that together, I'm going to get 18.02. So it's always 1 mole, there's 18.02 grams of that. So now we're going to use the calculator, and we're going to use 1.5 divided by 18.02, and that gives us 0 0.08324 moles of H2O, and then we're just going to see, okay, I've got one, two, three sig figs. This should be out to three sig figs, so this answer is 0 0.0832 moles. Now, you're going to go into, on your own, and you're going to solve these problems. Some of them will need Avogadro's number with them, and some of them will even take it a step further and give you an extra conversion. But they all rely on this principle of needing to add everything up to get how many grams are in one mole.